What's up guys, it's time to take a look at the official Android 9.0 Pi. Yes, P for Pi. That's the official name that Google has revealed for this version. We're going to be taking a look at the major new changes with the Android P, uh, what's the best of this new version, and also what does it mean for the Samsung phones, like when you should expect the update, and also what does it mean for the Samsung phones, what kind of features and changes you should expect from Samsung to implement with the Android 9.0 Pi update when it arrives for the Galaxy S9 Plus and the other Samsung phones, and how long will it take. So we're going to talk about all of that. So first up, appearance-wise, nothing majorly changed compared to the Oreo. Uh, it's not super colorful. They are keeping their minimal look. But in some areas, there are a lot of huge changes that you're definitely going to notice. So first up, with the Android 9.0, Google has officially introduced the gesture support for the Pixel phones. Right now, you can have the gesture and navbar keys if you want to. But in the future, it is expected that Google will completely switch to the navigation gesture uh, on their stock Pixel phones. So right off the bat, you will notice this small little bar at the bottom, which is what allows you to control these gestures. So uh, it is similar to iOS. For example, if you are in an application, let's say Play Store, and if you want to go back, uh, this acts as a home button. So you can touch it and go back to your home screen. To initiate the multitasking tray, you have to swipe up from this bar. And as you can see, all of your opened application, your recent applications will appear here while still giving you the Google search tab as well as your recently opened applications. And towards the bottom edge, you have your back key, which you can press to go back. Now, at first, it will take some time for you to get used to it. I mean, the traditional navbar keys are super convenient to use. Uh, but then again, this is the future and this is how Google will go eventually if they go for their future Pixel phones. Now, next thing you're going to notice is that when you hold on to the display, it vibrates for a second and give you these three options which you normally see at the bottom with the previous version so in my opinion it's a much cleaner look and then you can also change the icon shape which is something that Google normally removes from their version so uh, you can change the shape from square to rounded square to squircal or to teardrop so once you do that it will restart or respring and then you can see the applications have this teardrop kind of look and actually it is a really refreshing look for your icons. I mean changes like these are really good. It tells us that Google is definitely implementing more customization with stock Android which is something that you can't do with the previous versions. And speaking of customization, Google has officially implemented the dark mode within the UI. So if you go into settings then go into display, you're going to see the option for the device theme which allows you to change the theme from automatic which is based on your wallpaper to light or to dark which is something everyone would appreciate so if you go back and you check out your quick toggle area you can see everything is now black now remember it doesn't change everything like your phone dialer uh, your messaging application your play store third-party app will actually still be the same way as they are but the change will be in the notification area or the but the change will be in the quick toggles area and with the settings. Next up is the notch and it is here to stay whether you like it or not. Your next Pixel 3 flagship will indeed going to have a big deep notch and also a lot of other phones uh, are coming with notch notches. So they have given a proper option of notch. So you can simulate a display with a cutout. If you go here, you'll see a couple of options such as corner display cutout. So if I select that, as you can see, I have that ugly corner cutout. If I go with a double display cutout and oh my God, who in the hell would implement this shitty double notch to their phone? I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. Or you have a tall display cutout, which is what you're gonna see on the Google Pixel 3 uh, XL model. So it already looks pretty bad. So I'm just gonna have it on none. And I gotta say, I mean, if Google just stick with this design, it's, it's fine, it's fine. You're getting the dual front steer speakers, but their notch is just so deep. But yeah, notch is here to stay. And they're giving you the options to simulate it uh, for the developers or the manufacturers uh, so that they can optimize the apps as well uh, for their notch. Now they also have changed the way volume works. So it has a cleaner UI and allows you to quickly change the phone from ringer to vibration. If you want to do that, you can change profile right away. And you can also uh, change the volume by sliding up and down. 
or you can quickly jump into the sound settings by pressing the gear button. Now also when you take the screenshot, you're actually gonna get a edit option now. So you can immediately start doing some drawing on the display. Um, you can also change the colors, change the brush. Now next step is the lockdown security. So Google is taking your security pretty seriously and they're giving us the option to lock down. So once you enable the option and you go into your lock screen and hold the power key, uh, you're gonna see an option called as lockdown. So if I go ahead and press it, this is basically going to, this will disable the fingerprint reader. So it's not going to work. Uh, it's basically going to disable the notifications as well. So they're not going to appear on the display. Uh, your smart lock stuff, uh, everything will be disabled. And the only way to get in the phone will be your pin code. This will come handy if someone is like robbing you, they knock you out and they use your finger to unlock the phone. Uh, but if you uh, do the lockdown option, uh, no one can actually, you know, get into the phone without knowing the pin code. So this is something that is really good and it will be coming to uh, Samsung phones as well when they receive the Android Pie update. A couple of new changes with the battery. So uh, when you go into settings, it actually gives you uh, an estimated time of how long your phone will last. So it's showing that my phone will last about uh, 12.45 p.m. Uh, with 83%. If I go into the option, you can see that we have a changed look. So we get the battery saver, which now if you turn it on, it basically gives you this new cool little red uh, battery icon instead of giving you a red bar which was pretty ugly in my opinion so now it's giving you that clean look just gonna turn it off we're also getting adaptive battery this is really really nice because it actually limits uh, the application the third-party applications uh, to extend the battery life a lot of times they're using the Wi-Fi in the background so this will definitely going to increase uh, the battery life now in the same way they have also implemented the adaptive brightness which automatically adjust the brightness according to your environment and it actually works really really well so you can definitely save a lot more battery uh, by having this turned on also with the ambient display or always on uh, display whatever you want to call it you can actually see the battery percentage as well uh, it's right here. They also launched a new dashboard for digital well-being. It's basically going to allow you to control your smartphone addiction, uh, give you a data of how much apps you're using. You can limit your usage in order to control your smartphone usage. So those were some cool options with the Android 9.0 Pie, uh, some of the cool changes that Google has implemented. And now let's talk about what does it mean for the Samsung user? Uh, what does it mean for Samsung experience? UI uh, based on Android 9.0 Pie. Now Samsung will probably going to be one of the late companies to update their phones. I mean they are clearly uh, as we have seen with the Oreo update but the thing is that uh, a lot of features that we have here with the 9.0 Pie are, are already present with the Oreo on the S9 Plus for example. You're getting auto brightness which is similar to in fact you even get the option to change your freaking resolution which I have set to full HD plus or you can even go to HD plus to uh, implement that it's something that you don't get on the 9.0 Pi stock, so it's uh, running on 2K by default. And stuff like the ambient display or always on mode is clearly better on Samsung because it has been showing us the battery status since the day it was released. So everything was here and Google just got the battery percentage thing down at the bottom. And same thing with the screenshot, you can take it, edit it on the go. And the dark mode has been here since the Galaxy S7 Edge days. So the best part about this is that it turns everything into dark. If you go into your messaging application, every stock application, messaging, phone, settings, whatever app it is, it will have a dark UI. And that is pretty incredible. Uh, something that you don't get on the Pixel. It's not the same dark mode implementation. So now the things of what you can expect here to be implemented with the Experience UI is of course gestures. So Samsung has not implemented gesture yet. I showed you something called as Samsung Edge Gestures, which giving you a one-handed gesture support using the edge of the display. There were a couple of variations. You were able to set the position of that uh, edge area. I've actually done a full review. I will leave the link down below in the description. 
With the Good Lock app, we saw a lot of changes uh, that Samsung uh, will most probably be implementing it with the Android 9.0 Pie. Google gave us the option to have uh, just three themes where with the Android 9.0 Pie, you're actually gonna get a full control over your quick toggles. You can have any color to the toggles and change the opacity and a lot of stuff there. So you don't have to apply a theme from the Samsung theme store. You can use the default infinity theme and in the same way, they also change your multitasking area, which has a different look, kind of similar to the Android Stock 9.0 Pi, uh, but better because it's giving you the close all button to close all the applications at once. Another option to completely customize the lock screen with having multiple applications on the lock screen, uh, changing the theme, changing the clock colors and all that stuff. So, so what I'm trying to say is that Samsung already has a lot of features with the Oreo similar to this one. And with the combined with the Good Lock app, if you install it on your phone, you're gonna get all those 9.0 by future features that Samsung gonna add. Yes, I'm pretty sure this phone will receive Android 9.0 by, but that won't be happening until December, most probably. So as far as the plain features are concerned, a lot of stuff is already here and actually a little bit better than what stock has implemented. But then again, of course, it is stock Android. I appreciate what Google has done. Other than the features, there will be a lot of uh, performance gains as well uh, with the 9.0 Pi update. It always happened with the with the new update. Samsung phone definitely performs uh, perform better as we have seen with the Oreo update. But this time you're gonna see a lot of customization option as I've explained with a good log app reviews and we're definitely going to see some AI based improvement as well of course uh, Bixby will be taking care of things on Samsung's end uh, we will see the AI camera treatment as well uh, which is actually coming with the Galaxy Note 9 Samsung can implement that on the S9 as well uh, with just a softer update but yeah this is my review of the Android 9.0 Pi on the Pixel and my thoughts on you know how does it compare to the the Samsung Experience UI currently. If you want to see a speed test comparison, then please do let me know. Uh, I do actually want to see how the Pixel 2 XL performs uh, on the stock Android 9.0 Pi version uh, against the S9 Plus or even the iPhone on the iOS 12. If you want to see that, let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.